Friday's the fourth and final day of the Cheltenham Festival for the year. Um, two good days, Tuesday, Wednesday. Hit the crossbar a few times on um, on Thursday, on the third day. So uh, hopefully get back a few winners on, to round us off for a pretty decent week, I think. Uh, kicks off 1.30, the Triumph Hurdle. Obviously no Sagino here. Um, terrible news about Nicky Henderson's yard, but that's that's sport, I guess. Um, it's left Willie Mullins with quite a few at the front of the betting. Um, the one I've come down on was Bunting. Uh, based on the jockey booking, he probably looks he's like the third or the fourth string. But I don't think there's a huge amount between the, the Willie Mullins pair. Um, the favourites shortened up quite a bit because Paul Townend's picked that. And I, I don't think there's as much between the horses as the as the odds are suggesting. So... I think the price is dictating, in my opinion, more than anything here. But a 10 to 1, I'm willing to take a chance on Bunting. Uh, seven length winner on his debut on the flat. Went over hurdles with uh, with William Williams, one on debut. Um, finished fourth last time out in the grade one at the Dublin Racing Festival. They all kind of finished in a heap there. Um, the first kind of uh, four home. So, yeah, I mean, he's one of them races where you could run this three or four times and get three or four different winners so i just thought at the pa at the prices um he's owned by tony bloom the guy who owns brighton hove albion um his jumping wasn't great last time out um when he when he finished fourth if he can improve on his jumping he, he would make up a couple of a uh, couple of lengths and he, he could have he could have won that race last time out and who knows um Paul Tanner might have picked him and he's, he's going off 2-1, to one. you know, it's that sort of a race. But yeah, Bunting for me, lovely pedigree, enjoys the ground. 10-1, um, to one, fair enough each way price. At 2 10, the county hurdle. Um, Dan Skelton's having a fantastic week. He's, I think he's already had four winners so far. I'm hoping he can get another one here. This is a race that he tends to do quite well in. He's had four winners in the last eight years. Um, he always targets this race. I'm going to back both his runners just to be on the safe side. Um, the shortest price is, I think, uh, Lou de Sud. He's currently four to one, joint favourite at the moment as we speak. Second in the Betfair hurdle last time out. Um, six year old, still improving, unexposed. Um, handles handles the ground and I say the skeletons in cracking form and love this race um the other the other runner is Favois who won this last year um slightly bigger price at 12 to 1 but I'll be playing that each way I'll, I'll probably play both each way to be honest I think they both run run really well uh Favois due to go up four pounds in the weight for for a decent second in the Imperial Cup last week Obviously, this is an early closer, so his, his weights are already locked in. So he's technically four pound well in. He's got a decent claimer on board. Tristan Dorrell takes off another three. Um, yeah, he won it last year. Um, Dan Skelton's gone back to back with Langer Dan in the Coral Cup. If he can do the same with Favoir here, he's he's done really well. Um, I think the uh, handicap has he's been very lenient with this horse, in in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Ludison and Favoir. Both for Dan Skelton. I'll be back into both each way in the 210. Next up is the Albert Bartlett's three mile novice hurdle. It's at 250. Um, a bit like the Triumph, Willie Mullins has got quite a few in here. Um, and I'm on a similar kind of, of thinking, based on jockey booking alone, this horse has drifted out slightly and the horse is Dancing City. He's currently an eight to one shot. Um, that looks very generous for a horse that won last time out at the Dublin Racing Festival over two mile six. That was a grade one. Um, so we've got grade one winning form. Slight question about the step up in trip might not suit him. Possibly might not handle the ground, but he did win his point to point over three miles. Um, he won that by 12 lengths before before joining William Mullins. He is a seven year old, so he's a little bit older than these. I, I quite like that angle in this race. You know, he's a, a, a tough, hardened horse. He's generally come to the fore. Um, he's got some real good back form as well from his bumper days. Uh, he splits Ballyburn and Slade Steel. Now, those two horses have gone on to win the other grade ones um, for the novice hurdlers this year. Um, the Supreme and uh, the Gallagher hurdle, as it's now known. So, yeah, just to split those two, that's rock solid form. Um, if his jumping holds up, you know, and he gets the trip, 
which he should do based on his point to point record. I think he's a cracking bet. Again, like like I say, jockey book jockey bookings because Paul Townend's chose another horse. All of a sudden, this one gets bigger in the market, and the others get shorter. So, um, but yeah, I think that's just eight eight to one seems seems a little bit too big for me. So that's Dancing City in the two fifty, the Albert Bartlett. So after your three hurdle races, we've got the feature of the day, 3.30, the Gold Cup, the highlights of the festival. Um, we've got a short price favourite here in Galloping the Champ, talking about the even money. Um, last year's winner, incredibly impressive on his last two starts, but we know he's beatable. He was beatable at Punches Town um, last year in, and in the John Durkin this year, or, well, this season. Um like even money, like I, I don't like backing horses that are even money in like big fields like this. Um, I I, I just think if Corto Star and Denman couldn't win back to back Gold Cups, I, I don't see Galloping Deschamps winning it. But hey, who know, who knows? Uh, prices prices dictate your opinion. Um, if they're all the same price, you'd you'd want to be on Galloping Deschamps. But I just think even money in a Gold Cup, that's 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 not that's not for me. Uh, the one I've come down on is Jerry Colom. Um, this race has been his target for, for, for two or three years in the making. He's a slow burner with Gordon Elliott. 11 starts under rules. He's won nine of them. The others he's come second. So he's never been out of the first two. Grade one winner earlier on in the season when he beat Envar Alan at Down Royal. Stayed on really well. Hit the line really strong there. I think a step up to three mile two will suit. I think he'll be staying on strong up the hill. Um, soft ground's not a problem. He would have won at the festival last year. He ended up coming second, but for uh, probably a quite poor ride from David Russell, if we're, if we're honest. Not overly critical, but that's it. Obviously disappointed last time out at the Dublin... Um, he didn't run the Dublin Race Festival, sorry. Last time out, it was over Christmas, he ran at Leopardstown. I think it was something like 26 or 27 lengths behind Galloping the Shump. So he's got a lot to make up. Um, but I think that race was was uh, was won by speed, and I think this race will be run by stamina, and he's got stamina in abundance. So yeah, I, I also like another angle that Gordon Elliott missed out the Dublin Racing Festival, so he comes in fresh here. He did that with Tehupu to, um, on the Thursday in the Stayers. Um, Tehupu obviously had a big break and came back to win, and he's done the same here with Jerry Colum. He's around the eight to one mark. Solid enough each way. As I said, he's never been out the first two. Um, loves the ground. Loves the trip. Jack Kennedy takes the ride. Gordon Elliott's had a, a lot of placed horses this week. They've all been running well. I think he's had five or six seconds, five or six thirds. He's only had the one winner on the board. Hopefully, Jerry Clon can give him his, his second winner of the festival. Next up is 410 Hunter's Chase. Not a race like I don't really know much about the points point form none to chase. Um token selection here in Sam Crow. Obviously won won the Ballymore back in twenty eighteen. Um Turner's in twenty twenty, so he he handles the course. Um I mean he, he ran in the Grand National a couple of years ago and it looked like that was the end of him. He's come back, been rejuvenated in point to points. Uh, I just thought sixteen to one he, he looked in each way shot. As I say, I wouldn't really have a strong opinion though. I, I I'm not Mad keen on any of them in this this um, hunter chase with all the, the amateur riders and stuff and yeah uh, but sixteen to one token selection small stakes. Uh, next up the mare's chase I like the favourite here Dino Blue um, she was a uh, odds on the shot she drifted out now to eight uh, eleven to eight I think that's fair enough. Um, she was second in last year's Grand Annual. This season, she's already beat Gentleman Demi, who ran really well in the champion chase. She finished second for, to Al Fabiola last time out. He's a you know top, top class horse. Um, slight doubt about the trip, but um, I think class will just, just see her through here. She's £5 clear on ratings. Um, and I think at 11 to 8, I think she's she's fairly enough, fair enough priced. Final race of the day of the festival is the Martin Pipe. <laughs> Handicap hurdle at 5.30. Uh, it's for conditional jockeys. And the horse I like here is Waterford Whisper. Uh, currently 72 joint favourite. Uh, trained by Henry de Bromhead. Colours the silks of J.P. McManus. This looks like an absolute plot job. We saw I Know The Way You're Thinking today. Just absolutely hack up. Um, I think they've done the same with this guy, to be honest with you. He's off a mark of 127. 
Uh, he's only had four runs over hurdles, so he's completely unexposed. Uh, six year old, so plenty of room for improvement. Um, the jockey, I don't know a lot about him, Mike, Mike O'Connor, in all fairness, but um, I saw he had a ride in, in one of the big handicaps uh, the other day and he finished fourth. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's got to be full of confidence after finishing fourth on his his, um, his only ride so far at the Cheltenham Festival. So that's it, the Martin Pipe. Um, last, last race of the day, and I, I like this the joint favourite at the moment, Waterford Whispers in the green and gold of the J.P. McManus Silks. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the videos. Um, hope you back a few winners on the on the final day. And uh, yeah, all the best for your uh, for your punting.